Oro is the sign language of the nomadic Penan living in the rainforest of Sarawak. Penan, they are not living in only one group. They live and move in spread way in many groups. Um, when the group split, so usually the faster group goes ahead and leaves signs behind for the for the elders that are following. And the signs are made out of material from the jungle that are that they can find at a certain place, out of leaves, sticks, um, folding combinations. And the signs usually talk about the activities that they could take, like fi fishing, hunting, um, going to, to a certain place, durations, and so all kind of combinations. And leaving also sometimes instructions for the group that follows, like follow me or stay here, about my state, whether I'm, I'm hungry, I'm sick. And so it, it leaves a whole a whole set of different signs about myself and for the others. Uh, this one is uh, the sign of the river. That means uh, in this way, it, it's the river over there. I am going to the river over there. Most of the younger generation, they don't know about Oro mostly those from the family who born in town and uh, grown up in town. But they are really concerned about the preservation of the language because now the next generation doesn't come to the jungle anymore, um, spends all their time with technology on cell phones, tablets, etc and doesn't really want to learn that language anymore so the elders are really concerned about the preservation of it and, and actually maintaining the language if they doesn't know about the origin of their uh, ancestors it is no point to say they are uh, the descendant of the Pnan. so one of the things that show them they are Pnan, to know about the history, to know about the origin, to know about the custom. So they have approached us and asked whether through technology that the youth is interested in, could we then preserve the oro and have the young people get interested again in their in their in their culture and their traditions. Using technology to collect the data and to document it, documentation and preservation of the oral. Previously we have looked at some signs, we have seen the different, the different symbols and how to put them together and now we are in the phase where we are trying to, to find the rules, what is a valid combination, is there maybe more signs and how would new signs be created. In order to now digitalize the oro, there's different approaches that we can follow. So the one is that we that we um, collected all the different signs that um, that the elders showed us. We we photographed them, we filmed, and then we looked at also like how how do we combine the signs in order to create a full story. Then we are looking at what what are the underlying rules on how can we combine it, um, what, are valid, what are valid constructions of, of the story along the, along the stick. And then we can follow different approaches like a game-based approach, um, a tangible approach, or now what we are looking at is how do we ensure that the language stays alive? So how can, can new signs be created? and how can it be used in everyday life, like for example in an SMS system. So the, the, the idea of the elder was, can we then use this instead of, for example, emoticons or SMSs and just include it in the normal everyday language.
and thereby it would really stay alive rather than than a game which is just there to teach but then tomorrow you forget again because um, it's not in, in everyday's news. We try to make it uh, using technology so that we combine these things so that the old way, the uh, old custom, for example like Oro, it won't lock. So secondly, so that the new generation have the interest to learn about this Oro. And then to take it to the next level, um, to, re to introduce it to tourists and other, other possibilities. But the first aim is really to conserve the, the language and to make sure the next generation is still um, familiar with it.